हेलो गाइज वेलकम टू द वीडियो नंबर सिक्स इन द थर्टी डेज अफ डेटा ब्रिक्स सीरीज इन दिस वीडियो लेट्स गो थ्रू डी वी एफ एस मिनिंग डेटा ब्रिक्स फाइल सिस्टम राइट फर्स्ट आई विल शो यू हाउ यू कैन ब्राउज डी वी एफ एस यूजिंग द यू आई एंड हाउ टू इनेबल दैट बिकज नाउ इट इज बींग डिजेबल्ड एंड एंड एडमिन्स कैन ओनली डू द इनेबलिंग पार्ट सो इन द कम्युनिटी एडिशन वी आर द एडमिन्स वी कैन डू दैट राइट एल्स यू नीड टू आस्क एडमिन टू इनेबल दैट and the next thing is i will show you how you can browse dvfs from the notebook itself after doing that i will show you briefly how you can upload the data to dvfs using the ui as well as from the notebook itself let's get started before going through the practical part into the databricks ui first what is dvfs we know that it is databricks file system but it is a distributed file system mounted into a databricks workspace and available on databricks cluster dvfs is an abstraction on top of scalable object storage that maps unix like file system calls to native cloud storage api calls as this is just the introductory or the beginners level of databricks videos i will just show you the basic functionality of dbfs as i said to you before right now let's go to the databricks community edition i am on the home page if you go to this data tab you will see that there is just the data and create table but we don't have the dbfs here for that you need to enable that right that's what i mentioned in the beginning also if you go to this icon here or your email address if you go to the admin console this is what i mentioned you admin are only able to configure that if you go to this org space settings now you can search from here or if you scroll little bit down there is this dbfs file browser right it is being disabled we can enable this it says your dvfs file browser enabled you must refresh the page for this change to take effect if you go to the data as you can see here it is not still showing because we need to refresh the page right if you refresh this and if you now go to the data tab here is the dvfs that is how you can enable one part of that is being now completed if you now go to dvfs you will see that there are many things here there is the slash file store slash tables and there is shared uploads tables and there are some tables and if you remember these are the tables that i have uploaded before and now what is the next thing that we can do as i said you before we can upload the file into dbfs right remember always which one you are choosing here if you choose the database tables there is create table right but if you go to dbfs you can see that ui is different and there is upload icon here if you click this upload icon right it says here okay dbfs target directory if you hover on top of this it will show you details and what you can do here is you can provide target directory where you want that file to be uploaded or you can just leave it as it is here and if you click this drop file to upload you can choose the file right if you choose this file open and it says here movie statistics and it says file uploaded to this particular location that's all that's how you can upload the file into dvfs from the ui itself now how to access dvfs from the notebook itself i have already created a notebook if i go to this org space or maybe i can go to recent there is a notebook called dvfs right and as you can see here it is dvfs i gave the name and it is a python by default meaning that the default language is python you can choose any of this if you want and if i want to run this now shift enter it is the markdown so it ran right we don't need to provide this percentage sign or we don't even need to start the cluster if you want to run the markdown cell how to know it is a markdown if you double click this there is this percentage md and if you provide one has that is heading one two has heading two and so on i hope you know what is a markdown i'm not going to go through that right now right shift enter it runs now 
But if I want to run this DB utils, what is DB utils? Databricks utilities. I will create completely new video after this about Databricks utilities. If you just run this DB utils, it says here attached cluster is terminated. We need to attach the cluster. That's the reason I always mention you always start the cluster before you start working on Databricks. I have already started. For that, I can say select resource and there is 30 days of Databricks. I can attach and run. What happens if you run just DB utils, right? Now it is attaching the cluster and it says package DB utils. It knows that this is a package. For more information, type DB utils help in the cell, right? That is what I have done here db utils help if i run shift enter it will provide me some information what is this this module provides various utilities for users to interact with the rest of the databricks there is fs file system there is data there is credentials there is jobs there is library meta notebook preview secrets widgets i will cover some of these in my upcoming videos so you will know how they work right but just to give you some idea what is this let's go with fs in this video so dbutils.fs that's how it works there is dbutils and if you type dot okay i can just type it here instead of saying this here so i type db and it says autocomplete just click the tab it's there dot and it shows all the different selections right i can go fs it's automatically shown here just do tab dot there are again many things here right fs dot help that means that you can provide dot help into the fs here are the many things dvfs dot utils provides utilities for working with file system as we know fs for file system and we can mount we can use fs utils and many things as i said next video is about db utils so let's not go mainly into this now so here dbutils.fs.ls and if you provide the path right we need to provide the path dot means the current directory we see that there is file store there is databricks data sets there is databricks results and users right but if you go to the data and into the dbfs there is file store and users right but if i go to the notebook it shows here file store users as well as databricks data sets and databricks results what does this mean databricks already provided us some data sets to work on us right this is not in a good format right what i can do is i can provide the display in front of this particular command and now it will be shown in the table format so that we can view it in a table so it's as you can see here this is the path name size modification time Right. What data set do we have? As I said you before, there is some data set already being provided. What you can do is just take this particular path and then just provide it here inside dbfs. Uh, there is display dbutils.fs.ls and if I run shift enter, it will show me all the data sets that are being provided by Databricks for me. There are many data sets, right? That's how you can navigate. Uh, dbfs in the notebook itself now the last part how to upload the data from notebook itself right if you go to this file icon here there is the thing called upload data to dbfs right if you click this upload data to dbfs if you see the same looking ui appears here but here now it says here file store shared uploads and inside that there is providing my email address you can change this if you want if you go to this select and from here you can change okay i want to make it in the tables if you select it goes to the tables but by default it is there right and what you can do now same as before but if i go here i can go to shared uploads i can go to my email address select and now i can upload the data let me upload the same data here that is how you can upload the same data with a different UIs, right? Now it says some files were renamed to avoid conflicts. Movie statistics was renamed to movie statistic data set dash one CSV. I mentioned you before also. When you upload the same file, it does not overwrite it, but it gives the different name for that. And there is a good exclamation or the message being provided here just to know you that okay, something is happening there. So yeah, you can just click next. 
and once you click next there are many things here now so here is the spark api format and there is this file api format if you see the difference here there is slash dbfs if you go to spark there is dbfs colon and slash right there are two different apis that is being used in databricks and now here is the ss files from the notebook how we can assess the files right there is pi spark this code is how you can read that particular data that we just uploaded with PySpark. This is with Pandas, this is with R, and this is with Scala. There is PySpark, there is nothing here because we are working on the Python notebook. So there is no percentage Python being provided. If you go to Pandas, there is nothing being provided, but we need to import the Pandas to read that file, right? For R, it shows here percentage R that you don't get any issue when running that particular cell. If you go to Scala, there is Scala, right? Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something about Databricks file system. In the next video, we will go through Databricks utilities. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.